All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to discuss about how to file your piston rings. Uh, this part is absolutely critical and it's crucial to your whole build, depending on whether you're using forced induction by route of turbocharger or supercharger, or if you're planning on keeping it um, naturally aspirated and just hooking up a little bit of nitrous or uh, some other method like that to give you uh, a little bit extra horsepower. Um, you're setting your piston ring gap is absolutely crucial to the whole deal. Too large a gap and you're going to run into issues of having a blow by, um, you're going to lose compression, you're going to lose power. Too tight and you run the risk of having uh, heat and, uh, cause your piston rings to uh, expand and then having the ends touch like that. If the ends touch, your engine's ruined and you're going to have to rebuild it. So. As I discussed in the previous video, um, you'll determine how your setup's gonna be. You'll do your calculations and you'll find your piston ring uh, gap. Now, when you go to file, okay, your piston ring to be able to cut down the gap that you need, okay, it's very important that you only do one side. This other side is machined by the factory and it's very precise and we're gonna use that um, and it really doesn't matter if it's that side or that side, but you're going to pick a side and you're going to use that as a guide. And what I mean by that is once you get your uh, file all together and you have it mounted wherever you need to have it mounted, uh, where it's secure, you put your piston ring up and you start to file, okay? You'll turn your crank here and obviously it, it turns the wheel. Um, but basically as you start to grind this down, it's going to take metal away from that one end. Then you're going to bring it over on this side and then you're going to try to touch it together and see if they come out even okay see how there's no opening and there's no gap between these two it's just whoops there you go there you go see that's nice and flush that's how you want it a lot of times people will have um a piston ring and they'll file it and you'll have one end that's straight and you'll have another one that's an angle that's bad uh, you want to get these as straight as possible. You want to have it as even and flush where there's absolutely no gap in it whatsoever. So once you have that done, <clears throat> I've got a piston ring here that's already done. I can show you with it, okay? This is the primary ring. Um, and as discussed in the, the previous video, uh, mine just happens to have the end on it, okay? Some of them will have dimples regardless that's how you're going to install them inside the pistons with that dimple or the letter facing up towards the face of the piston. Anyway, once you're done filing these, uh, what you're going to do is test fit it into the cylinder. As you push it into the cylinder, you're going to squeeze in between a little bit, okay? So you don't damage the bore. Once you get it there, you're going to pull this back just a little bit so it's pretty close to the edge. I've got a piston here set up already where I've got the secondary piston ring already in here and it's mounted in its proper location on the second or the secondary spot of the piston. And the reason for such is because we want to use this as a guide to get that other piston ring in there to sit flush. And so you are going to take that and you push it all the way down until the outside of that piston ring is touching the deck of the block. Okay. It's nice and flush in there now. Now if you look, see how the entire piston ring is perfectly circular inside that cylinder. Now what you wanna do is grab your feeler gauge. Now on this engine and the way that uh, our customer plans around, he's running uh, this as a daily driver, uh, but he's also plans on hooking up nitrous oxide to it and using it periodically. So factory specs on this should be um, uh, 20, 22 but we're changing from 22 to 24, uh, 22 on the top ring and 24 on the secondary ring. Um, when you set the gap on this, you always wanna have at least uh, two between uh, the top ring and the second ring. Um, so on this one, you can see this is uh, 22 thousandths of an inch. And so we will take this, and I already have this one filed so I can show you this. Um, but what you'll do is you will put your feeler gauge in there, okay? You don't want to have any room. You don't want to have any wiggle room where you can move back and forth, but you want it to fit just barely on there. 
See how it just barely fits, but it's snug and it's not loose. That's what you're looking for. Um, if you can take your feeler gauge and move it back and forth like this or move it this way, then your gap's messed up and I would not recommend using it. Now, the other thing is if you take a look at this right in here, okay, see how it from the top part of the piston ring to the bottom part of the piston ring, it's pretty daggone even. It's got a little bit of roundedness there in the middle, um, but that's not going to be that critical, um, but it's, it's pretty straight. That, that's about as straight as I can get it. Um, that's what you want to do. You don't want to have it at an angle where the part of the piston ring that's closest to the inside here, okay? Like that, hold on, let me find something sharp here to point this out to you guys. Um, no, of course I'm not gonna have something, right? Okay, this bottom part here, okay? If that's kind of at an angle and this top side is wider than that bottom side, that's bad. That's where you have an angle, but you wanna have this as evenly and, and spaced out as possible um, so that as the piston ring expands it's going to expand evenly so we'll go ahead and grab that out of here okay now let me try to focus in on this here okay now there's two types of filing machines you have an electronic and you have a manual i prefer the manual because it gives me a little bit more feel um, it's a little bit more forgiving uh, where the electric ones if you make a mistake <laughs> You might as well trash the ring because there's really no give or take in it on this I can go little by little so if I'm you know hundred thousandths of an inch or whatever just a hair bit out whatever um, I can take it, you know Hook up to that one spot and just do a very light turn and I can Sometimes I'll take it and I'll just do it like this very slowly just to grind just a hair bit out um, which is okay on an electric one this thing's spinning you know very very fast and so if you zap it it's gone it's very unforgiving um, the other thing I like to do with these after I'm done filing them is I'll take a little bit of a fine grit sandpaper and I will just uh, uh, hanker the edges just a little bit to get the um, rough edges off um, you don't want to go crazy on it, okay, because there are uh, coatings that are on the piston ring. So you just want to do this very, very softly, very mildly. But it's just to knock the burrs off um, after you're done filing. And then you can go ahead and install them on your piston rings. <clears throat> now on this one, I'll, I'll show you, uh, for example. Uh, actually, let me grab a piston ring here. And I'll grab a piston. Um, okay. On your piston, you have... A couple different channels here okay the very lowest point that's in here this is where your uh, oiling rings and your catch are going to be at and then right in here is your secondary piston ring and then right up here is your compression or your uh, primary ring the purpose of that being is the oiling ring and the uh, catch are actually supposed to trap oil inside here to help uh, oil the cylinders and, and keep uh, lub lubrication between uh, the piston and the piston wall as the piston sliding up and down into the chamber. Um, if you didn't have that there and you didn't have any lubrication, you would just fry everything. Um, so basically what you'll have is you've got your catch right here, okay? Piston rings have to go into a very specific order when you put them in, okay? And what I mean by that is as I spoke to you in, I believe it was the first video, um, you have a dimple, and it's like that on pretty much all pistons. This designates um, where the front of the engine goes, how it goes in, um, and if you wanna know about how to install the rod, connecting rod onto the piston, um, go back to my other videos and take a look at it. Um, but with all that knowledge already, um, you already know that where this dimple is, this is facing towards the engine, uh, the front of the engine. This is on the passenger side. Uh, I've already got the driver's side done, so I'll use this as an example. What you do is you want to take your catch, okay? And if you notice, there's two sides of this. You have a side that's cut where it's up, okay? And then you have the other side, if you look down, it'll kind of look like it's facing down, okay? 
this needs to be facing up towards the piston, okay, where it's kind of cut and looks like it's pointing up. That's where you want to have your piston ring at. So you put your catch in there like that. Your two thinner rings, which are your oiling rings, okay, these are the, the thinner of the two, okay, there it is. The one that goes on the bottom of your catch, okay, is going to go up at about the two at a two o'clock angle, okay? So if you're looking at your piston, it's gonna go this way. Your other oil ring, which is the one that goes on top of your catch, that one is gonna be about maybe the 10 to 11 o'clock angle, okay? So basically it's gonna form like a V. If you look at it, okay, it'll be like that. So that's how those ones are supposed to be. Once you get that taken care of, and you have your primary and your secondary rings filed to where they need to. You're gonna locate where your dimple is or where the letter is, and you're gonna turn it up. So if it's like this, this would be wrong because <clears throat> there's no letters, there's no dimples, there's no nothing on there. So you'll face it up. Now, the secondary ring is gonna to go to the left, but it's gonna go at the nine o'clock position. So it's gonna go completely sideways you're going to take your primary ring, and again, you're gonna locate the dimple or the letter, and it's gonna go in the opposite direction at the three o'clock position. So that's how it's gonna fit onto the piston. It's very important that you get that correctly, because if you don't have those in order, it's not gonna seat right, it's not gonna seal right, um, and you're not gonna have as good a compression uh, as you should, and then you'll just have other issues. I won't get into in this particular video so um, but you got to make sure you have those positioned correctly so you have your oil like I said the, the very first ring oil ring you put on is going to be at about the two o'clock position and then you'll have your secondary oil ring that'll be up at about the um, 10 to 11 o'clock position and then obviously your catch is going to be down here at the six o'clock position your secondary at the nine and then your primary at the three so that's it for that